Good morning. Uh, today we're going to talk about my gear list for uh, what, what I am taking on my wife and I's through hike of the Appalachian Trail 2017 attempt. Um, we've been accumulating gear over the past year uh, and we've changed our mindset a little bit. Uh, we started out wanting to be as, as ultra light as possible and then eventually we determined that we're sharing some gear, uh, so you, we might as well add some comfort in there uh, because the weight cost is not as much. What you'll see uh, in my gear list is everything from ultralight gear to light gear to weight be damned gear. And uh, we basically took uh, the approach of looking at gear in four different ways. One uh, was weight cost, two was uh, uh, dollar cost. Uh, three was durability, and four was function and utility. Uh, we put all those things together and tried to make the best decisions we could. So without further ado, uh, here is what I'm carrying on the trail starting March 22nd. Okay, the first thing we're going to discuss is uh, the big three. We're going to talk about our shelter system, my backpack, and my sleep system. Let's start with the shelter. For our shelter, we ended up going with the BA Copper Spur UL3. Uh, BA stands for Big Ass Tent. I'm sorry, Big Agnes. Uh, UL stands for Ultralight. The three person tent is Big Ass. Uh, ultralight, not so much. We decided that since uh, we'll be sharing some weight between the two of us, uh, that, that we wanted to go with something a little bit more comfortable for our tent. Initially, we started with uh, a two-person tent, thinking we would go with uh, the tarp tent, double rainbow, or maybe the duplex from z uh, But after talking to some friends who had this big Agnes uh, Ultralight 3, uh, we determined that it was weight the, worth the uh, weight penalty to carry it. Now, once we decided that we wanted to go with a three-person tent, we uh, had a choice between this one and the Z-Pax uh, triplex. And there's a couple of reasons we chose this one over the triplex. Obviously, the triplex is made out of Cuban fiber. It's super light at uh, 1.5 pounds compared to the four pounds of this bad boy. Um, however, uh, it's, it, it's a single walled tent, the z Pax is, uh, so condensation issues might be more of a problem. Uh, second, uh, you have to use 12 stakes to, tent, to stake it out. The Big Agnes is freestanding, except for the fly, which you have to stake out. And we really like the idea of being able to sleep under the stars uh, without the fly but still be bug proof. I ended up switching out the tent stakes that come with it uh, with these carbon fiber ones, uh, which are a little bit lighter, a little bit stronger. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, in addition, we're using a Tyvek ground cover. And uh, otherwise, it's, it's exactly the way it came to us. Uh, we ended up getting it on sale uh, with the tent and Tyvek for 350 bucks compared to $700 for the Z-Packs, uh, which is another reason why we went with the Big Agnes. Okay, let's talk about my backpack. I chose to go with the Gossamer Gear Mariposa, which is a 60 liter backpack, uh, and I love this thing. Uh, it is the perfect size to fit all my gear. Uh, coming in at two pounds, it's the perfect weight, uh, and it's it's just set up very nicely. It's very comfortable, uh, and we've taken it on some multi-day trips as well. Um, so let's talk about the backside first. Uh, there's five different pockets, and we'll cover those real quick. On the right-hand side is this top pocket, and it's big enough to fit my uh, cooking system, uh, my pot, my stove, and uh, my can fuel canister. On the bottom is a tall pocket that allows for two one liter smart water bottles, which is very nice. Uh, it's positioned such that it's lower in the front and it's actually quite easy to reach back and grab my water. In the middle is this big mesh pocket uh, and that is gonna fit my camp shoes 
as well as my rain jacket, which may be wet from time to time or all the time. And then on the other side is this very tall cavernous uh, pocket, which actually fixed, fits the big ass tent, big Agnes tent and um, it, all its poles. On the top, which reaches over and, and snaps down, uh, you have another zippered compartment, which will be my electronics uh, in a Ziploc bag, as well as uh, potentially the AT guide. Okay, and this is the front of the backpack. You'll notice that there are multiple attachment points uh, on the front, which is great. I have attached a Z-Pack pouch. Uh, this is big enough to fit my iPhone 7 Plus, uh, and there's a mesh pouch in front of it that I can put uh, things like chapstick or sunscreen or, or anything else that, that doesn't need to stay dry uh, in that. On the other side, I have a ShamWow, which is just a great all-around uh, camp cloth to have around. One of the things that makes this thing so comfortable uh, are the straps and the belt. It's just really thick uh, and it's, 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 it's just comfortable to wear and I love it. On the belt, it has two pretty large pockets which I'm sure I will fill with snacks. Uh, and, and there's also a sit pad that is removable uh, that you can use as a uh, sit pad when you're in camp uh, or you can actually uh, hike without that in there. There's also a, a, a stay, um, aluminum stay inside, so it, it has somewhat of a frame to it. And there's not much to see when you open it up. It's just a contractor bag uh, on the inside. Uh, I'm going to protect it from rain in two different ways. Um, I'm going to protect the inside, uh, which is going to have my sleeping pad, sleeping bag, uh, clothes, things like that, uh, with the contractor bag. On the outside, I have a Z-Pax pack cover. Uh, a lot of people say that it's silly to have both a contractor bag and a pack cover. Uh, my philosophy is that if the pack gets wet, rain weighs more than the pack cover uh, at an ounce, uh, so it's best to, to cover it with a backpack cover. Um, I've kind of told you where some of the big things are going. Um, the bottom part of the inside is going to be my sleeping bag and sleeping pad. The middle part will be my clothes. Once again, my clothes are pretty dense and heavy, uh, and that'll take up the middle part. So the weight's going to be pretty centered on my back. Uh, the, um, the quilt is not super heavy, uh, nor is the uh, pad. So uh, having the clothes in the middle uh, centers the weight. On top of those, uh, at the very top is going to be uh, my food bag, which uh, will also be heavy, um, but I want easy access to that. Okay, let's talk about our sleep system, my sleep system. Uh, first off is the Thermarest Neo x Light Air. I think those are all the words to the uh, type of uh, blow-up mattress I got. Uh, I started off with a closed cell foam uh, uh, accordion style uh, mattress. I did not like the way uh, it it took up so much space on my backpack and I did not like the way I felt after a night's sleep on it. Uh, so I upgraded to this one. Granted, uh, I've heard that they are uh, loud. Uh, they, they, they make some noises when you move around on them, uh, but they're a little bit more comfortable uh, and they are prone to uh, getting a hole in them potentially. Hopefully with the Tyvek ground cover, uh, that will uh, not be an issue. Next up is my sleeping quilt, which is a Enlightened Equipment Revelation. 20 degrees, extra, roll, extra wide, like me, and extra long. So you'll see that it's more of a blanket style than a sleeping bag. Uh, the logic behind a quilt is that as you're sleeping, um, your body crushes the down uh, of a sleeping bag, making, making the uh, heat properties uh, worthless. So a quilt just strips away that, saves you a little bit of weight. Um, the sleeping pad is a pound, sleeping bag is a pound and a half. Uh, 
a little bit heavier than the normal because like I said, it's long and wide. At the bottom, you can zip up the bottom for, your, for a toe box and uh, cinch it up as well. So that is my sleeping bag. Um, in the early stages of the, the hike, um, I'll be wearing a uh, base layer long johns and a long sleeve shirt. I sleep warm, so that's probably going to be too much, and I'll switch those out eventually uh, for uh, shorts and, and a t-shirt. But that's my sleep system. Okay, next we're going to talk about food storage, cooking, and uh, water filtration. So, starting with the bear bag. This is our bear bag kit. It'll hold uh, four or five days worth of food. Uh, this is a rock sack and you will fill it with rocks. Uh, it also has uh, some, some string or twine in it that allows you to throw, throw this over a tree limb and hang your bear bag uh, so the bears don't get to it. This next thing is a koozie. Uh, this is for cooking your nor rice side uh, so that you don't have to cook it in your pot. You can cook it straight in your bag. Uh, this is good for, for many different types of uh, cooking meals. Uh, Darwin on the Trail has a great video. I'll link to it in the description that shows how to make that koozie. We made it out of a, 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 a visor. Actually, Jen did. Uh, here's my cook pot. It is an Evernew Titanium uh, 0.9 liter. So uh, that one pot could probably boil enough water to cook two meals for, so that we each have one. This is our camp stove. It's the pocket rocket. Uh, we've used it multiple times. It's a great little stove. Boils things very quickly. Uh, a little lighter, big lighter. Snow Peak um, long handled uh, shovel is what I wanted to say. Uh, titanium spork. Uh, this, as you can see, will get all the way down deep into your rice food. Another sham wow because you can't have too many of those. Uh, and we're talking about food and, you know, what goes in must come out. So I saw a tip on a trowel. Uh, and instead of a trowel, this person said that using a 9-inch a snow uh, tent stake uh, works just as well, but it's a lot lighter and cheaper. So for 2 bucks, I got this 9-inch stake. I wrapped 20 feet of uh, paracord around it just so we have some extra paracord because you never can have too much paracord. And we'll see how that works as a trowel. Um, it leaves about six inches um, left above the paracord or below the paracord. So I think it should work out pretty well. Okay, let's talk about filtration. Like many, uh, we are going with the Sawyer Squeeze. And there are so many... Um, tricks and tips to the Sawyer Squeeze. I'm probably going to do a separate video about all I'm learning about this thing um, because there's, there's ways to trick it out that make it work much more efficiently. The first thing that we noticed is uh, the Sawyer Squeeze, actual Sawyer Squeeze bag that comes with it. Number one, it's only one liter. Uh, number two, uh, it's, it's pretty flimsy and uh, I've heard that it could... Uh, uh, break down pretty quick. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to cut it towards the bottom and that'll be our, our scoop for um, water. If we're at a water source and it's not flowing very well, uh, we're having to, to, to dig deep to get some water. Uh, this will be our scoop. A lot of people will uh, cut off a, uh, the bottom of a, a plastic bottle uh, this will be a lot more flexible, so I think it will allow us to get uh, the water a little bit quicker. So, that's all we're using this one for. Okay, so, you know, the next thing we did, we bought a platypus, a two-liter uh, bladder for our, for our Sawyer. Uh, and you would think, since platypus is one of the most well-known bladder companies... And Sawyer is one of the most well-known filter companies that they would be compatible. But the threads just don't match up. And what we were finding was with this platypus bag is uh, it was leaking 
uh, all over uh, the Sawyer squeeze. So uh, dirty water getting into clean water, uh, not a good system. So the platypus, I would recommend not buying these. Uh, it's not worth your time. Okay, so uh, Evernew uh, is a very expensive bag made in Japan. And you think, you know, made in Japan, everything should be cheap. Uh, but it's not. These things are freaking expensive. But from all the research we've read, um, it is the best solution uh, for your dirty water. Um, it fits the Sawyer Squeeze perfectly. And uh, it is very durable. And most people uh, who started the trail with one of these and finished, uh, the Evernew bag was still going. Last but not least... Uh, you want to remain as efficient as possible. And so there is there is a way to turn your Sawyer squeeze from a squeeze into a gravity-fed system. So instead of having to squeeze your dirty water to filter it, uh, it just you can just hang it up on a tree and, uh, and, and go cook something while you wait. So there's two methods that I've heard that work. I have not tried them yet. The first is what's called a tornado tube, and this is simply a, a kid's science project uh, thing. You can get it on Amazon for about two or three bucks. And basically what it does is you attach two bottles, one to the top, one to the bottom. Uh, it creates a vortex and, and basically makes a tornado in, in the top bottle as it, as it drains into the bottom bottle. Uh, this is useful, putting it on the Sawyer. Uh, so that once again, your dirty bag goes here, this goes here, uh, you turn it upside down, give it a squeeze to get it going, and it'll drain by itself, filtering. Uh, the only downside to the tornado tube, I've heard, is you need to cut off about an eighth of an inch um, because it doesn't sit. I've put this on the Sawyer, it sits just fine. I have not tried to filter water yet, but like I said, I'm going to do another video that talks all about that. Um, Tom Willard, I'll give a link in the description to his video. He has a great video on exactly how the tornado tube works. The second piece that if this works, like I think it will, uh, you won't need the tornado tube. And this is the coupling uh, used for the Sawyer. It's actually made by Sawyer. And basically what this does is it replaces the syringe for back flushing. So you put it on on the Sawyer squeeze and then you can attach a, a, a bottle with clean water in it, squirt it out, and it will flush your system. However, it's very similar to the Tornado Tube and I've heard, I've read, I've seen on videos that you can, you can use the uh, coupling set up just like you would the tornado tube for a gravity fed system. I'm going to try that out. If it works great. If not, I'm out $2 and 50 cents. It's not a big loss. Uh, but that's it for my food, cooking and water setup. Okay. Let's talk about my clothing system. Uh, we will cover what I wear daily town clothes and sleeping clothes, uh, cold weather clothes, and then that pile of jackets over there. All right, so let's talk about what I wear daily. Uh, I have an ex officio hat. I have a pair of sunglasses or uh, my regular glasses, which I have on right now, uh, a buff, uh, an icebreaker burrito wool shirt, pair of Nike uh, running shorts. They have a liner in them. They come down right at, right to my knee. They're, I think the end seems 9 inch. And I've had them for years and I love them. Uh, and they're very comfortable to hike in. Got a pair of uh, darn tough socks as well as a pair of trail runners which are the uh, La Sportiva uh, Wildcats. Uh, it's funny, we went to uh, an REI to find some shoes. I really thought I was going to get the Solomons and tried the Wildcats on. And uh, immediately they felt great on my feet. 
and I've put many miles on this pair. I found a pair on sale online for 80 bucks, and so I have um, a pair when these are uh, go bad. After that, my foot may change and the size may change, so um, I'll probably just buy the next pair after my second pair uh, on the trail. Uh, to round things off, my hiking poles are the Lecky uh, Cork Light, and they're very light. Uh, I like the locking mechanism on them. They're, they're, uh, they seem pretty sturdy. Uh, we've taken them up into some rock climbing areas or scrambling areas, uh, and we threw them around, and they did pretty good. Okay, so next are the things that um, will go in my, my clothes sack. Uh, that's a Z-Pax clothes bag. I think it's the 15 liter. I don't know. Uh, it's the, the medium long or medium large uh, Z-Pax. It uh, also, you can reverse it and it has a felt inside so you can double it as a pillow. I will use it as a pillow. Not sure I'm going to take all my clothes out and reverse it every night for that, but um, it's it's was an interesting thought. Okay, I have a little bug net, which is weighs absolutely nothing, so I'll take that. Um, I have a Z-Pax uh, fleece um, a beanie, uh, Z-Pax uh, possum down gloves which are, uh, are pretty warm. We're here in Wisconsin, and uh, I've used them outside quite a bit, and they do great. Uh, my camp shoes are the Zero um, X-Trail shoes. Uh, I like these things a lot. A uh, couple things I don't like about them. Um, there is a ton of extra material I had to cut off and re-sew. Uh, and I, my hope for these was that uh, to give my feet a, a break from wet socks or something like that is that I could hike in these. Um, I put many, many miles uh, hiking in these in Costa Rica when we were living there. And uh, they worked great. They felt great. Um, however, in the rain, uh, they... No matter how I adjusted the straps or how tight I had them on it, uh, my foot would be straight and the sandal would go like that. And it was uh, very annoying if I was not on flat ground. Um, so my hope for a secondary hiking shoe uh, in the rain especially uh, was kind of dashed. Uh, they weigh about a pound, so they're a little bit heavy. Uh, I know a lot of people like Crocs. Uh, I like this design. I hate having fabric between, between my toes, uh, so this goes over the top of my foot. Uh, Crocs just, I've, I've, I've worn Crocs for a long time and uh, I've gone through several pair and for the ability, having the ability to hike in them, um, I don't think Crocs would stand up. So these are gonna be camp shoes, river crossing shoes, hiking shoes when the weather's pleasant. Okay. At night, I uh, have a long sleeve smart wool shirt, uh, which is very comfortable, a pair of darn tough socks, and a uh, pair of uh, icebreaker, I believe, uh, long johns, yeah. Uh, so, like I said, I sleep warm. Uh, those may go, uh, certainly after it warms up, they're, go they're going home. Um, and I'll, I'll slim down there. I'm also bringing a second set of clothes to hike in. Uh, this is a smart uh, wool shirt, an icebreaker. Uh, this pair of pants is an REI pair of, of pants. Uh, I like them a whole lot. I tried uh, a pair of Pranas on uh, and a pair of Columbia's first. Uh, these are full length pants, but they are zippered. Uh, they hit right above my um, kneecap, so that's great. Uh, I also am bringing uh, a pair of underwear. This is uh, just a pair of Old Navy synth synthetics. 
the idea about this is uh, when it's colder, I'll have a long pair of pants to wear. The smart wool shirts, uh, they really don't hold up very well. And I know my hiking shirt that I'm hiking in daily will eventually deteriorate. And I will need to start wearing the second one. And also it, it gives me something to wear uh, if I haven't worn them on the trail in town um, to do laundry and, and things such as that. Rounding out uh, rain gear uh, is an umbrella. And I, I, think, uh, I think that's... I'm not sure if that's going to be a good idea or not. We'll find out. It weighs 8 ounces, so there is some weight to it. However, uh, you know, I've read a couple articles where people just love them. But, as we mentioned before, I already have a backpack cover, backpack liner. I'll have a rain jacket, which I'll show you here in a second. Uh, do I really need an umbrella? Uh, maybe, maybe not. You know, since Jen and I are both carrying umbrellas, we thought we could stencil, you know, through hiker needs ride to town, through hiker needs ride to trailhead uh, on them so we can open them up and hitch a ride a little easier. Or I think the best way is just to have me hide in the bushes and have Jen stand out there because then she'll get picked up and I'll run and dash the guy's uh, dreams. Anyway... Uh, this is a, a hiking kilt, a rain kilt, um, very light, I think it's three ounces, uh, and this is only for, for rain, it's from ULA, and um, you know, they say people pack their fears, I guess my fear is rain, <laughs> rain and, and cold, so um, you're seeing a little, uh, a little bit, that, bit of that in this video. Okay, uh, also for cold weather uh, is this... Uh, Patagonia Capeline 3. Um, it's just a long sleeve shirt. It's kind of thin, but it's a good layer um, with my smart wool shirt. Should it be a little chilly outside? Next up is my rain jacket. And this is a mountain hardware something or another. Starts with an A. Uh, I don't remember, but I've had it for years. Uh, you know, the it has this mesh lining that gives it a little bit of uh, airflow and circulation. It also has some some pit zips that allow uh, circulation. Uh, so, you know, when when we start out, I think this is going to be great to have to keep me dry as possible without uh, being wet inside because of sweat. Uh, however, I'll probably drop this as soon as uh, the temps warm up enough to to warrant just hiking in in a smart wool shirt. Last but not least is my Ghost Whisperer. This is Mountain Hardware as well, and this sucker is super warm, super light. Uh, it folds up into its own pocket, uh, about the size of a baseball or a softball. Uh, so it's 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 great. Uh, this beautiful color is because I found it half price off. So instead of 350 bucks, I paid 170 bucks for it. Uh, so I'll go with the green instead of black. Uh, I'm fine with that. So that is my clothing system. Uh, if you see anything missing or think I'm off my rocker somewhere, uh, just mention it in the comments. Okay, this is my last section. Um, this is just basically electronics and toiletries and uh, a couple of miscellaneous items. First, we have sunblock. Uh, I am a very, a very white man. And if I'm not white, I'm red. So sunblock is a must for me when we're not under the canopy. Uh, this is a Z-Pax toothbrush. Folds up. It's really light. I probably won't take the case, and I probably won't take this tiny tooth toothpaste container. I'll take this one instead. Pair pair of earplugs. Uh, this is for uh, all the snorers out there. I know I can be one of them, but those are for snorers who snore louder than me. Uh, for the most part, Jen and I will be sleeping in a tent. Uh, I know there is a trail culture of. Um, Sleeping in a shelter, you get to know people, um, 
you have mice run over your face, you sleep next to people you don't know. Um, I think for the most part, we're going to try to tint out unless the weather is just horrible. Next up, electronics. Um, I have two cords, one for my iPhone 7, which I'm recording with, and one for my Black Diamond headlamp, uh, which has rechargeable batteries instead of having to carry batteries with me. My iPhone uh, is multi-purpose. I'm going to use it as my camera, as a video recorder to document our journey. Uh, occasionally, maybe listen to some music. Um, usually when I'm hiking, I like to kind of zone out and um, listen to birds and watch for wildlife and hear what's going on around me. But occasionally, I might listen to an audio book or some music. Um, lastly, uh, we have that, the gut hook ab on the iPhone. So um, that will that'll, uh, coincide or work with the AT guide as, uh, as our planning tool. Speaking of, I'll be carrying the AT guide as well as uh, a small notebook to journal in. Uh, they'll go in that Ziploc bag that came with the AT guide book. Toiletries, very simple. Toilet paper, Germex, wet ones. The wet ones are, are mainly for the at the end of a day, just to kind of wipe down my body before uh, I put on my camp clothes. Uh, that might turn out to be uh, not feasible, but that's that's how I'm starting. Uh, bought a deck of cards that'll probably go into the first hiker box we come to. And then um, my trusty Kershaw Ken Onion Leak uh, knife has the quick assist opening uh, for those surprise bear attacks. It's uh, serrated so we can cut cord uh, and it's got a very sharp blade so we can cut um, fruit or whatever needs to be cut. So that is that rounds out all my gear. What I'm going to do now is put it all into my backpack, uh, show you how that fits in there, uh, and then uh, weigh it, see if I'm where I need there to be. There is my backpack. Uh, I came in at a base weight of 19.1 pounds. Uh, that is everything I'm carrying minus fuel, food, and water. Uh, you'll notice the smart water bottles down there, uh, they are empty. So, uh, that puts me at about 31 pounds with four days of food, two liters of water. Uh, obviously, those consumables uh, fluctuate, uh, so I, I think I'm happy with, with that weight. Uh, you'll notice absent is the umbrella. Uh, there's also the deck of cards. Uh, as I was making the videos, uh, I found myself talking myself out of bringing those things. Uh, so, they're just not coming along. Uh, the umbrella, I might ask for... Uh, in the summer months when I send my uh, rain jacket home, or maybe I'll just buy a poncho and, and use that. So, hope you liked the video. Uh, if so, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe down at the bottom. If you want to follow uh, in the written word, uh, small w, uh, you can follow us along at AppalachianTrailTales.com uh, or follow us on Instagram, same name at Appalachian Trail Tales uh, or Facebook at the same name Appalachian Trail Tales. Thanks for watching. See you on the trail.